another episode of LAFE TV. I'm Carrie Loke, LAFE's Executive Director. Today we have an awesome art lesson that includes origami and gives you a huge chance to be really creative. We're really excited to have Miss Sarah Brim bringing this lesson to us again today. Hopefully you saw her other episode and I know you'll enjoy this one too. We'd like to thank the Sagan team of Finance of America for sponsoring this episode and supporting LAFE to make these lessons happen. And we are bringing you these lessons during the school closures to bring a little bit of joy and fun into your household. So thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to post what you create with the hashtag LAFETV. Now I'm going to turn it over to Miss Brim. Hey everybody. So today I'm going to teach you how to make an origami dragon eye. It could be a dragon eye, it could be a snake eye, you could make a person's eye. It really depends on what you want to make. So I made a dragon eye and it looks something like this. And what's cool about this is that when I squeeze it, I can make the eyelids open or close so that it looks like the dragon's eye is opening and closing. So you get to choose any colors you want to use to make your dragon eye different colors. I made one that's blues and purples and the other one I made purples on the outside and green on the inside. So here's how we're going to do that. a piece of eight and a half and eleven paper, a ruler, a pencil, some scissors, and then something to color in your dragon with. So it could be crayons, it could be colored pencils, you could use markers if you want, you get to decide what you like best. Oil pastels would also be a really good option because they're really nice for blending colors together. So to get started, what we have to do is cut our paper into a square. So I'm going to show you two different ways that you can do that. First, you could use your ruler and what you're going to do on the longer side of your paper. So this will measure out to 11 inches. You want to measure to eight and a half so that it's the same length as the shorter side. So I would put my ruler up to the edge of the paper, find out where eight is then go halfway to where nine would be and make a little mark above that. And I'm using a pencil right now so that I can always erase if I don't like or if I put it in the wrong spot. Then I'll move my ruler up to the top of my paper and I'll do the same thing again. I lined up the edge of my ruler with the edge of my paper. I'm going to go over to the number eight and I'm going to go up above it and mark where the eight and a half inch mark would be. So now I have a mark at the top of my paper and a mark at the bottom of my paper. And all I need to do is connect those with my ruler. So I'm going to take my ruler, make sure the edge of it is touching both of those little marks, and draw a straight line between those. When I'm holding my ruler, my hand should be pressed down in the middle so that my ruler doesn't wiggle while I'm trying to draw my straight line. Because if my hand was up here at the top and I tried to draw, the ruler might move like that, and I don't want that. So I could now cut on this line and have a square piece of paper. When you're cutting, you want to cut very carefully so that your square doesn't get messed up and try your best to stay right on that line. So I'm going to finish doing that, and then I'll show you how to do this if you don't have a ruler. It won't be as perfect of a square, but it will still work. So there's one square. If you don't have a ruler, you're going to take your paper, you're going to find one of the corners, and you're going to fold it so that it lines up with the other side. So I'm folding it across. I'm taking this corner and I'm going across my paper and I'm going to line it up with this straight side of the paper. I'm gonna line up this whole spot. So right here, this is crooked. What I need to do is make sure when I'm looking at this bottom corner here, the line, the straight side of the paper is lined up with the straight side of the piece of paper right underneath it. This way is a little bit more complicated. It's a lot easier if you're using a ruler. Now I could just take my pencil and draw a straight line right here where my paper is folded. And when I open that up, I can cut on that spot to make my square. So. If you have a ruler, it's much easier to use a ruler and make a perfect square. If you don't, you can try folding your paper like this to make a square of your own. So 
Here's my square that I used with my ruler. And we're going to start doing our origami folding. So I want you to turn your paper so it looks like a diamond. And now what you're going to do, you're going to take the bottom corner of your paper where I'm pointing with my finger, and you're going to fold it all the way up so that it is overlapping and perfectly on top of the corner at the top. I'm holding that down with one of my hands and I'm flattening the other side with my other hand. Okay, so you'll need to be using both hands to do this. And I'm going to make sure that I crease that line really well by pressing on it a couple times. Then I'm going to open up my paper and I have a horizontal fold line going across my paper. Now I'm going to twist my paper so that the line is going up the top and the bottom and I'm going to fold my paper a second time, just like we did for the first fold. So I'm taking the bottom corner, folding it all the way up to the top, overlapping it on top of that corner that's up there, and creasing the bottom. So when I open this up now, I will have two folds, and it's going to make an X on my paper. So while we're doing the folding, you can easily pause your video at any time and catch up on the steps that I've just showed you because origami can be kind of difficult, so you might need to take it a little bit slow. For the next step, we still want our paper to look like a diamond, and I'm going to start with the bottom corner again, and this time I'm going to take that bottom corner and fold it up to the middle where that little X is. I don't want to go over the X, I want the point of the paper to be perfectly touching that little X. And I'm going to flatten the bottom now. So I'm always holding down my paper and then pressing because I don't want it to wiggle around while I'm folding it. Now what I'm going to do, we're going to fold up one more time. I'm going to fold this bottom part of the paper here so that it's touching the fold line in the middle of our paper. So I'm going to slowly pick that up and fold it up towards the top like this. When I see that it's touching that fold in the middle of my paper, then I will hold down my paper and flatten the sides. Okay, so right now we have kind of a diamond shape. What I want you to do now is twist it around so that we're looking at the bottom pointy part of the paper again. That's pointing towards our belly button. And we're going to fold it a second time like we just did. So I'm gonna start with the very bottom I'm going to fold that up to where the middle of the paper is, and I will flatten the bottom part of this triangle. And then I'm going to fold this flat part that we just folded up to the middle again as well. So just like what we did before, it's going to look just like the top of our paper looks. I'm going to fold it like that. Okay, so now we've got the first few folds done. This is going to sound silly, but what we're going to do next is we're going to unfold everything we just did. So I'm going to slowly unfold it all down, and I'll unfold the top as well. And now we're going to refold it. So this should be pretty easy because we already have the folds in our paper. What I want you to do is once again start at the bottom and fold the smallest triangle up so that the point of it is touching the line, the fold that is right above it. Okay, then I'm gonna crease the bottom. I'm gonna fold it one more time. So I'm gonna fold this bottom part of our triangle we just made up to this line right here. So it's not the middle line on our paper, but it's the one right underneath it, like this, and crease my paper. So remember, you can pause the video whenever you need to to catch up on steps if I'm moving too quickly. We're going to do the same thing again to the top part of the paper. So I'm going to twist it around so that the point is at the bottom pointing towards my belly button. And I'm going to start with the small triangle at the bottom. So I'm going to fold this point up so it's touching the line right there, the fold line, and I'll flatten the bottom. Then I'll fold it one more time so that the flat part that we just folded is touching the line right underneath the middle fold line. So you should have something that looks like this. And the next step you're going to do is you're going to draw the iris of your 
So you could make a dragon, you could pretty much make any kind of creature, or you can make a person's eye too if you want to. The only thing that really changes is if you're making a person or something that has feathers or something like that, you probably wouldn't draw scales on the outside. And the iris of different animals are different shapes. So as people, we have a circular iris, but something like a reptile or a dragon might have more of a diamond shaped iris. So to start with this, you take your pencil and if you want to, you could trace something that's round in your house or you can just draw a circle in between those two flaps that we just made. So there's my circle or my iris. And remember the iris is the colorful part of the eye. Now I'm going to make the pupil. Since I'm going to make mine a dragon, I'm going to make mine kind of, it's like, mm, the shape reminds me of like a football or um, the shape of like a leaf or a petal on a flower. My pencil broke, so I'm gonna use a crayon. But you should be using a pencil so that you can erase in case you mess up. So, kind of like a football shape, right? And then what I like to do is I like to put one little shiny spot, so like a reflection somewhere in the eye. So now what your next step is, is to color in the eye. So I want you to decide what colors you want the iris of your dragon eye to be. So for my example that I showed you guys earlier, mine goes from yellow to lime green to dark green. It's nice when you choose a couple of different colors because it makes your dragon or your creature's eye look more interesting. So I'm going to use crayons for this. You remember you can use crayons, colored pencils, whatever it is that you have at home. And I'm going to start next to my iris with or that's my pupil actually, this is the iris, with yellow. So I'm just coloring right next to the pupil. And I'm not pushing super hard because I want to try and blend my colors together and I'm going to show you how I did that on mine. So to start with, I started with yellow and I colored a good distance away from the eye but I didn't fill in the whole space. Now I'm ready to switch to a new color. So to blend these colors together, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my next color, I'm going to do orange. I'm going to color it right next to the yellow and a little bit on top of the yellow. And I'm not pushing hard right now, I'm pushing lightly. So that I can mix those two colors together a little bit and then above that I'm just going to color plain orange. And underneath it it'll look like my colors blended a little bit. You could also go back in with more yellow to help blend those colors together. So I could take my yellow again and go up into where I drew the orange and it'll help mix those colors. The colors won't mix very well unless you are pushing kind of lightly. If you push really hard, crayons have lots of wax in them, so one color won't color on top of another one. So I would finish out this eye. I would choose maybe one more color. I'm going to do red. I go to the edge. I'm drawing myself a line so I know not to draw outside that shape. And then I'm coloring in with red and I'm coloring lightly and I'm lightly going on top of the orange a little bit so I can mix those two colors together. So to mix these colors, basically all you're doing is you're putting down one color and then you grab the next color and you put a little bit of the new color that you're using on top of the old color that you use lightly and that's how those two colors mix. So now you can take your time. You can color in your iris with black or another color if you feel like doing it a different color. Or this is the pupil. You can color the iris, which is outside of the pupil, with whatever colors you want. It's best if you use at least two colors, but you can always use more. And then on the outside of that, depending on what kind of creature you're making, I'm going to outline this with black, and then I'm going to color it a dark color. So I'm going to go all the way around the outside, and then for mine, I think I'm going to add purple. So you decide what colors you want to use, and you start to color in your dragon eye.
behind a fold or paper one more time to make the eyelids, and then you get to color the outside of the eye, the eyelids, whatever colors you would like. So, what I'm going to do for this folding is I'm going to take the bottom part of my paper and fold this up so it folds to where the line in the middle should be. It's a little bit harder to see now because you've covered it with crayon, but what I did was I folded my paper about halfway covering up my iris. Your paper should fold really easily because we already folded it at the beginning when we folded our whole paper and then unfolded it. You'll also fold the bottom eyelid down. So right now we're going to cover up our whole drawing that we just did. The whole iris, the pupil, everything like that, you can't really see it. These are the eyelids. So right now it's like our dragon's eyes are closed. What you're going to do first for this part now is you're going to draw on some scales. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then you'll color behind the scales with whatever colors you would like your eyelids to be. So to make my scales, I'm going to use a dark crayon. You could also use a pen or a pencil. It depends on what you want to do. I'm going to use black so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm starting at the bottom of one of the eyelids. So I'm going to open this up so you can see. I'm just doing one eyelid at a time. And to make scales, all you do is you draw a bunch of bumpies, bumpy lines right next to each other. So they look like little rainbows. A bunch of rainbows all next to each other in a line. And I've made it all the way across the bottom of my paper. To make the next layer, what you're going to do is you're going to start on the edge of your eyelid again. And I'm going to make a rainbow that stops in the middle of the rainbow that's underneath it. And then another rainbow that stops in the middle of the rainbow underneath that. And there. See how I'm making a bunch of rainbows that are all connecting in the middle of the rainbows that are underneath them? So I'm going to do this all the way across until I run out of space. And then I can fit one more row. You want to draw these kind of big because if you draw them really small, you're going to have lots and lots of scales and it's going to take you forever to draw all of them on. So I like to draw mine nice and big. Then you'll fold up the bottom part of the eyelid and you'll do the same thing for the bottom, except these ones are going to be upside down rainbows. So I'm starting with my rainbows, going all the way across. Now I make my second layer of rainbows. Remember, they stop, the rainbow ends in the middle of the rainbow that's underneath it. And then you connect them all the way across like that. Okay. All right until you have all of your scales on here. So if you want to make smaller scales, you can. Just remember, it'll take you a little bit longer. Now that all of my scales are drawn on, I can color in my eyelid. So once again, similar to how I did the iris of my dragon, I'm going to use three different colors. This time I'm going to start with a light blue at the bottom of the eyelid, so where the two eyelids are connecting. And then I'm not going to color the whole thing so that you don't have to watch me do that whole thing. I'm going to do blue next, a darker blue, so a lighter blue. And remember, to blend my colors, all I'm doing is I'm lightly pushing with my crayon and going into the turquoise blue that's right underneath my dark blue. And then for my last color, I'm going to do purple. So. You can choose how many colors you want your eyelids or your iris to be, but I think it's more interesting when you add a couple of colors and you try to blend them together. Okay. how we're going to finish off our dragon's eyeball. We're going to flip our eye over so we're looking at the blank side. And if you have a pencil nearby, what you can do, oh, I forgot my pencil broke. 
You can probably see where we folded our paper before. There's two lines that cross over each other that look something like this. I drew it onto my paper so I know exactly where I'm going to fold my corners to. You might want to do something like that as well. And I'm going to take these pointy parts at the side of my paper and carefully fold them so it's pointing right at the middle of that little plus sign that I drew. And then I will carefully fold my edges. So I'm holding it down and I'm creasing the edge. I will do the same thing with this other side. So I'm going to fold it so that they're both pointing at the middle part of that plus, and I'm going to crease it right over here on the side. So here's probably the trickiest fold that we're going to do. And I'm gonna use a ruler to help me fold this part. So if I were to draw this line where the fold is, I can see that it goes all the way from the top of my paper to the bottom like this. If you want to, you can mark that for yourself. And then I have these two folded down like that. And there's also like a little diamond shape right here. So here's how we're going to fold this. I'm going to use that little diamond shape and this line in the middle to fold it. I'm going to take my ruler, set it down on my paper so it lines up with that little line that I drew at the bottom and with the corner of this diamond right here. Okay. And then I'm going to take this part of the paper and I'm going to push it and fold it up a little bit so there's a crease on it. Then I'll move my ruler out of the way and I'm going to finish folding that and crease it nicely with my fingers. Okay, so this is the tricky part. I'm going to show you how to do it again. I'm going to do it on this side as well. I'm going to take my ruler, line up my ruler down here with where that little line is that I drew and twist this top part so that it's lined up with the pointy top of that diamond right there at the corner. Then. I'll hold my ruler in place and push that up so I start to make a little fold. Move my ruler and fold it and make a nice crease. So the bottom of our paper looks like the bottom of a diamond right now. I'm going to flip my paper around, push these back a little bit, and do the same thing for this side. Take my ruler, line it up with this line that I drew and line this part up with the diamond that's over here. Push that paper up, then fold this and crease it really nicely. And then we have one more to do. So you're doing this four times, one on each corner. Lining up my ruler with those two spots, pushing up my paper, and then folding it and creasing it better with my fingers. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull all of these folds that I just made up a little bit so they're touching each other like that. And now when I flip this over and push it, so you might need to help it out at the start. I got to kind of push the eyelids open a little bit. But once you figure out how to get it to open, it should open and close really easily. And you've made your dragon eye. So you can do these any colors that you want. I have one that's blues and purples with an orange and red and yellow eye, and I have one that's oranges and purples on the outside with a green eye in the middle. So that was our little art project for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Wow, that was a really creative, really fun lesson. I'm sure you had a great time with it, and we can't wait to see what you created. So please post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag LaifeTV so that we can see what you've been up to. Thanks again to Miss Brim for the lesson, and we hope that we'll see you again soon for another episode of LaifeTV. Bye!